today we will continue our discussion on mathematical modeling and uh, we will develop today the mathematical modeling of a distillation column today we will develop the model of a distillation column Previously, we have configured three control schemes for a distillation column, but uh, we did not discuss the modeling. So, first the configuration of a distillation column. This is the tower column section. This is the top tray. This is the feed tray and this is suppose the bottom tray. Now, feed is introduced to this feed tray. This is the feed stills. or feed tray. Feed has the flow rate of F. Suppose this feed mixture contains only two components, they are A and B feed mixture contains two components namely A and B. The composition of this feed mixture is Z. Now, the vapor which is leaving this top tray, this top tray is denoted by N. A vapor steam which is leaving this top tray has the flow rate of V in. The vapor steam which is leaving this top stays has the flow rate of V n. Now, this vapor steam is condensed in an overhead condenser. This is a condenser, fine. After condensation, the produced liquid, condensed liquid is accumulated in a drum. This is called reflux drum condensed liquid is accumulated in this reflux drum. Suppose the hold up of this condensed liquid in the reflux drum is M D. The hold up of condensed liquid in this reflux drum is M D. A part of this accumulated liquid is withdrawn as top product. This is top product. This is also called distillate. Top product is also called distillate and definitely this is a liquid stream. Now, we will assume the flow rate of this distillate is D and composition is X suffix D. The top product flow rate we are representing by capital D and composition is by X D. 
a fraction of this accumulated liquid is recycled back to the top tray. Fraction of this accumulated liquid is recycled back to the top tray. This stream is called reflux stream. This reflux stream has the flow rate of R and composition is same with the distillate stream. I mean the composition is X D fine. Similarly, at the bottom section the liquid which left this bottom tray, this is we can say first tray, this is first stage. The liquid which is leaving this first stage is accumulated in this column base fine. Suppose the hold up in the column base is m suffix b. Now, this liquid then goes to a bottom reboiler and vaporization of liquid occurs in this reboiler. Then the vaporized stream is recycled back to the bottom stage. Suppose this vapor flow rate is V suffix B. The vapor flow rate of this recycle, the flow rate of this recycled vapor is suppose V B. And a part of that accumulated liquid in the column base is withdrawn as bottom product. This is bottom product. This is also a liquid stream. It has the flow rate of suppose B and composition is X B. The flow rate of this bottom product is suppose B and composition is X B. So, we are basically introducing to this column a single feed stream and we are getting two products, top product and bottom product fine. Now, this condenser is basically a total condenser. The overhead condenser is actually a total condenser because the overhead vapor is totally condensed. The overhead vapor which is entering the condenser is totally condensed fine. We can call this condenser as a partial condenser when there is a overhead uh, uh, vapor distillate involved. When there is overhead vapor distillate involved, then we can only say this is a partial condenser. But here we are considering it is a total condenser. So, there is no overhead vapor withdrawal fine. So, this is all about the description of the distillation operation. Next, we will develop the model based on some assumptions. So, what are these assumptions? What are the assumptions? First assumption is feed is a saturated liquid. The feed which is entering into the column that is a saturated liquid fine. That means, the feed is at its boiling point temperature, feed is at its boiling point temperature fine. 
this is the first assumption. Second assumption is the column is perfectly insulated. The column is perfectly insulated. That means, there is no heat loss from the distillation column to the surroundings. It means, no heat loss from the process to the surroundings. The column is insulated show that there is no heat loss from the column to the <coughs> surroundings. Third assumption is all the trees are ideal, all the trees are ideal. That means, the trees are 100 percent efficient or we can say tray efficiency is 100 percent, fine. So, in this column we are considering ideal trays, 100 percent efficient trays. Next assumption is there is no vapor hold up, vapor hold up on each tray. is neglected. Vapor hold up on each tray is neglected, because the density of vapor is much, much lower than the density of liquid. That is why we are considering this. For the high pressure column, this assumption is taken into account. I mean the vapor hold up is considered on each tray. Fifth assumption is the molar heats of vaporization, the molar heats of vaporization of both components A and B are approximately equal, are approximately equal. The molar heats of vaporization of components A and B are approximately equal. It implies that one mole of condensing vapor releases sufficient heat to vaporize one mole of liquid. That means, for the condensation of vapor, some heat is evolved. I mean the vapor which is condensed that releases some amount of heat. And for vaporization of liquid, heat is required, fine. Now, the one mole of condensing vapor releases the heat that is sufficient to vaporize exactly one mole of liquid, fine. The meaning of this assumption is that. Sixth assumption is the column has total 20 trays excluding, excluding total condenser and reboiler. The column has total 20 trays excluding total condenser and reboiler, fine. Although this is not the assumption, this is basically the configuration of the process, but anyway we have included under assumptions, fine. So, we have considered N for to represent the top stage, basically N is 20 here. Seventh one is, anyway we can include another thing with this, the feed stage is the 10th stage. 
So, feed stays is the ten stays. The feed enters the column on ten stays. Fine. Seventh assumption is perfect mixing on each stage. Seventh assumption is perfect mixing on each stage. That means, if this is a tray suppose, this is the liquid steam. So, if we consider perfect mixing on each tray, then composition of the liquid everywhere is same. I mean if we represent the composition x n that is identical everywhere on this stage. Next assumption is relative volatility, relative volatility of the two components a and b remains constant throughout the column. Relative volatility of the two components a and b remains constant throughout the column. Next assumption is ninth assumption liquid hold up liquid hold up varies from tray to tray. Our fourth assumption is negligible vapor hold up, but we are considering liquid hold up. I mean liquid hold up varies from tray to tray, but there is no variation of vapor hold up. Fine. Last assumption tenth that is condenser and reboiler dynamics are neglected. Condenser and reboiler dynamics are neglected. There we are not considering the dynamics of <coughs> condenser and the boiler. So, based on these 10 assumptions, we will develop the model for the binary distillation column. Now, you just see, you just visit the assumptions 2, 4 and 5. Revisit assumptions 2, 4 and 5. Second assumption is the column is perfectly insulated that means there is no heat loss. Now this fourth assumption is there is no vapor hold up, vapor hold up is negligible on each tray. And fifth assumption is if one mole of vapor condenses at the same time one mole of liquid is evaporated, one mole of liquid evaporates. Can we write based on these three assumptions all the vapor flow rates are identical? I mean the vapor steam which is leaving first tray equals to the vapor leaving second stage. Like this way the vapor leaving n stage equals to V B. Can we write? So, based on the assumptions 2, 4 and 5, we can write that all the vapor flow rates throughout the column, they are identical. It means V 1 equal to V 2 equal to V n finally, V B. Fine. Anyway, next we will go to develop the modeling equations 
dividing the distillation column into different envelopes. So, first you will develop the modeling equation for the top section, top section means reflux drum. So, first you will develop the modeling equation for reflux drum. The schematic of a reflux drum is like this, this is the reflux drum. Since we have considered there is no dynamics of condenser, so we can include here without developing any modeling equation for the condenser. The vapor stream which is entering into the condenser that we have represented previously by V n, n is basically 20 because we have considered total number of stages 20. Now, this is the ac accumulation of liquid in the reflux drum. Suppose the liquid hold up is M B, sorry liquid hold up is you consider M D, fine. There are two outgoing streams, one is distillate, composition is X D, another one is R, composition is X D. See all the compositions are here, basically the mole fraction you consider all the compositions as mole fractions and flow rates are here basically molar flow rate. Say for example, D has the unit of mole per unit time, fine. Now, this is the schematic of the top section and we will consider this as the first envelope. This is the first envelope, fine. Now, we have to develop basically the two equations, one is total mole balance and another one is component mole balance, fine. So, what will be the total, we will write here total mass balance, originally that is mole balance, anyway we are writing here total mass balance. Now, differentiation of M D, this is the accumulation. What is the input to this envelope? V 20, fine. V 20 is the input to this envelope. What are the outputs? One is D and second one is R, okay. So, D M D D T equals to V 20 minus D minus R. This is the total mass balance equation for this first envelope. Next, we will develop the component mass balance equation. What will be the component mass balance equation? D M D multiplied by X D D T, fine equals to V 20, what is the composition? This is vapor steam. So, vapor composition will represent by Y and liquid composition will represent by X. So, V 20 multiplied by Y 20, agree? Vapor flow rate is V 20 and its composition is Y 20. Now, D multiplied by composition, what is the composition of distillate? X D. Similarly, R multiplied by X D. The composition of reflux stream is X D. So, this is the component mole balance equation or component mass balance equation. Now, we wish to simplify this equation. So, M D D X D D T plus X D d m d d t equals to v 20 y 20 minus d x d 
minus r x d. We will substitute here d m d d t term. So, m d d x d d t plus x d what is d m d d t that is v 20 minus d minus r equal to v 20 y 20 minus d x d minus r x d. So, this d x d a d x d this d x d will be cancelled similarly this and this r x d and r x d. So, what will be the final expression? Final expression will be m d d x d d t equals to v 20 y 20 minus x d fine. If we further simplify we will get d x d d t equal to v 20 by m d y 20 minus x d. So, this is the final form of <coughs> component mass balance equation for first envelope, envelope 1 fine. Now, in the next we will consider the second envelope that is the top stage. So, next we will consider the top stage that is 20th stage. First we have to make the schematic for this. So, this is the top section of the column and this is 20th stage. So, n equals to 20. Now, the vapor which is leaving this top stage that is V 20 fine. What is the incoming stream to this stage? One is reflux R and another one is the vapor stream which is coming from 19 stage that means V 19 fine. Outgoing streams one already we have drawn that is V 20, another one will be L 20. So, incoming streams are one is V 19, another one is R, outgoing streams are L 20 and V 20, fine. So, this is the second envelope. this is the second envelope. Similarly, we have to develop the total mass balance equation. We will consider for this 20th stage the liquid hold up as m 20 fine. If the liquid hold up is m 20 then d d t m 20 which is basically the accumulation terms equals the input flow rates. What are the input flow rates? One is r, another one is l 20, no not l 20, another one is v 19 fine and outgoing streams are l 20 minus v 20 fine input minus output. Now, based on the second, fourth and fifth assumptions, we have concluded that all the vapor flow rates are identical. If that is the case, 
So, V19, V20, they are identical, fine. So, V19 and V20, they are equal to each other. Now, this equation reduces to R minus L20, got it? Since based on the assumptions 2, 4 and 5, we have concluded that all these vapor flow rates are same. If that is the case, we have to cancel out this V19 and V20. Then finally, we get the total mass balance equation DM, DM20 DT equals to R minus L20. What will be the component mass balance equation? Component mass balance D M20 corresponding composition is X20 DT equal to reflux flow rate and composition XD plus V19 Y19 minus L20 X20 minus V20 Y20, fine. Why we did not multiply the composition with this equation, final form? I mean, why we have included again V19 and V20 terms in the component mass balance equation? Because X is varying from tray to tray and Y basically is the equilibrium composition of X. So, Y varies from tray to tray. That is why we cannot neglect these two terms from this component mass balance equation. Can you simplify this equation as we did for the case of first envelope? So, M20 dx20 dt plus x20 dm20 dt equals to rxd plus v19 y19 minus l20 x20 minus v20 y20. If we substitute the total mass balance x20 dt plus x20 dm20 dt will substitute that is r minus l20 equals to rxd plus v19 y19 minus l20 x20 minus v20 y20. So, L20 X20 is cancelled out. So, finally, we will get <coughs> DX20 DT equal to 1 by M20 R XD minus X20 plus V B Y nineteen minus Y twenty DX twenty DT equals to one by M twenty R X T minus X twenty plus V B Y nineteen minus Y twenty. This is a component mass balance equation. Just we have substituted V nineteen equals to V twenty equals to V B then we get this equation, fine. So, this is the second envelope, the modeling equations of the second envelope. Next, you will consider the third envelope, that is any tray will represent by any tray by nth tray. So, n stays, fine. Now, this is the <laughs> schematic of n stays, n stays, 
hold up is m suffix n. Input streams are one is v n minus one and another one is l n plus one. Outgoing streams are v n and another one is l n fine. This is the schematic of n stage. So, this is the third envelope. You quickly derive the modeling equations. What will be the total mass balance for this? d m n d t equals to incoming streams are l n plus 1 plus v n minus 1 and outgoing streams are l n minus v n. That means, the final expression is like this d m n d t equals to l n plus 1 minus l n. What will be the component mass balance? d m n x n d t equal to l n plus 1 x n plus 1 plus v n minus 1 y n minus 1 minus l n x n minus v n y n fine. It is quite straightforward to write the equation for component mass balance. So, we will not uh, proceed further to simplify this equation, it is quite easy fine. So, in the next uh, anyway, uh, so what will be the n stage basically? n stage is basically just below the top stage that means, 19th to above the feed stage that means, 11 stage and below the feed stage that means, 9 stage to above the bottom stage that means, second stage. Basically, we have considered common nomenclature in for these stages, fine. That is why we have represented that by n stage and those are just 19 to 11th and 9th to second stage. So, in the next we will consider the feed stage, which is not included within this n stage fine. Also the first stage is not included here because that has slightly different nomenclature. Similarly, for the case of column base we have to consider separately. So, now we will consider the feed stage. We will derive the total mass balance and component mass balance for the feed stage. So, first we have to draw the feed stage. This is the feed stage that is basically 10 stage fine. So, the hold up will be m 10 one input stream that is feed stream. Another one is L 11, the liquid which is coming from just above the feed tray. Another input is the vapor stream which is coming just below the feed tray that is V 9, fine. And outgoing streams are V 10, L 10. 
outgoing streams are V10, L10. So, this is the fourth envelope. So, what will be the total mass balance equation? Total mass balance equation will be D M10 DT equals L11 plus F plus V9. These are input streams L11, F and V9. And what are the outgoing streams? One is L10, another one is V10. These two are the outgoing streams. So, it is straightforward to write the component mass balance equation, just multiplying the flow rates with their composition. In the accumulation term, we have to multiply the hold up with composition. So, d m 10 x 10 d t equals L 11 x 11 plus f feed composition is z plus v 9 y 9 minus L 10 x 10 minus v 10 y 10. Fine. This is the modeling equations for the feed stage. See within the end stage as I have mentioned the bottom tray is not also included. So, we will consider in the next the first stage. The schematic representation of the first stage is like this. This is the first stage. Fine. Now, input liquid flow rate one is L2. Another input stream is VB, which is coming from the reboiler. Outgoing streams are one is L1, another one is V1. Fine. So, this is the fifth envelope. What will be the total mass balance? If fold up is m 1 for the first first stage, then d m 1 d t equal to L 2 plus V B minus L 1 minus V 1. Agree? Similarly, if component mass balance d m 1 x 1 d t equal to L 2 x 2 plus V B y B minus L 1 x 1 minus V 1 y 1. Fine. This is the component mass balance equation. The last envelope we have to consider that is the column base, which is also not included within n stage. So, last one is column base. Uh, the schematic of that is somewhat like this. This is the first stage and this is the column base. Some amount of liquid is accumulated in the column base. We are considering the hold up is M B. 
and one reboiler is installed here. This is the boiled up vapor which has the flow rate of V B. Sometimes the bottom flow rate is included in this way B. The liquid steam which is leaving first trays that has the flow rate of L 1 and this V B is actually introduced to the first trays. Fine. So, what will be the total mass balance d m b d t equal to L 1 anyway this is the sixth envelope. So, total mass balance is d m b d t equals to input is L 1 and there are two output streams one is B another one is V B fine. L 1 is the input stream B and V B both are the outgoing streams from this sixth envelope. What will be the component mass balance d m b x b d t equal to L 1 x 1 minus V b y b minus v x b. This is the component mass balance equation. So, basically there are total 6 envelopes, one is for the reflux drum, second one is for top stays, third one is for end stays, fourth one is for feed stays, fifth one is for bottom stays and sixth one is for column base. Fine. Now, what are the variables involved in these modeling equations and how we can calculate those variables? In the modeling equations, we got total mass balance. Total mass balance equations are basically the ordinary differential equations. Fine. By solving those equations, what we can calculate? Hold up. By solving the total mass balance equations, which are basically the ordinary differential equations, we can calculate hold up. Fine. Another type of modeling equations are based on component mass balance. These component mass balance equations are also ordinary differential equations. By solving the component mass balance equation, we can get liquid phase composition, liquid phase composition and this is liquid hold up fine. So, M or total mass uh, total hold up liquid hold up and liquid phase composition we can calculate from the developed modeling equations. Based on three assumptions second, fourth and fifth we know all these vapor flow rates are identical equal to V B. So, this information is also known to us all vapor flow rates we can calculate fine. What are the rests? One is Y, another one is liquid flow rate. How we can calculate these two variables that we will discuss next, fine. How we can calculate Y? We have assumed one thing that the relative volatility of components A and B remains identical throughout the column. Relative volatility is represented by alpha. So, relative volatility of any component I 
with respect to another component j is represented by alpha i j. Relative volatility is represented by alpha and the suffix is used in this way. Alpha i j means relative volatility of component i with respect to component j. Alpha i j is related with k by this way. I mean alpha i j equals to k i divided by k j. K is the vapor liquid equilibrium coefficient. K is the vapor liquid equilibrium coefficient. It is also called distribution coefficient which is basically represented by y by x, I mean k equals to y by x. So, can we write here y i divided by x i whole divided by this is for j not i k i by k j. So, y i by x i whole divided by k j means y j by x j, can we write this? Because k equals to y by x, so we have just included here the suffix. Now, see our example column is a binary distillation column, that means there are two components, one is i, another one is j. So, we can write x i plus x j equals to 1, this is for liquid phase. Similarly, for vapor phase we can write y i plus y j equals to 1, agree? Because our mixture is a binary mixture. Now, we will write here y i divided by x i whole divided by 1 minus y i divided by 1 minus x i fine. Our intention is to calculate the vapor phase composition of component i, that is why we are trying to avoid y j and x j terms, fine. So, y j equals to 1 minus y i and x j equals to 1 minus x i. If we rearrange this equation, we will get y i equals to alpha i j x i divided by 1 plus alpha i j minus 1 into x i. If we rearrange this, finally, we will get y i equals to alpha i j x i divided by 1 plus alpha i j minus 1 into x i. You see in this equation alpha i j is defined that is constant, we have assumed that x value we can calculate from the component mass balance equation, fine. So, all the terms in this equation are known except y i, so we can calculate y i, fine. In the next class we will discuss how we can calculate the liquid flow rate L, fine, thank you.